Hi guys, welcome to Hemoglobin again. So today we will be uh, looking at the nature of an oxygen dissociation curve. We will be looking at the effect of carbon dioxide concentration on the curve and the reasons for it. And we will be looking at the properties of hemoglobin in different organisms. So looking at the spec, uh, we are here now today. So uh, loading, unloading and dissociation curve. But so what we say last time, hemoglobin uh, has a high affinity for oxygen. So we can carry four oxygen molecules in the lungs that uh, hemoglobin is going to associate with the oxygen forming oxyhemoglobin. And uh, it, it's going to release, uh, dissociate with oxygen next to the respiring cells. Right. So. Organisms living in low oxygen uh, areas will have high affinity hemoglobin. Why? Because they need to be able to easily bind with this oxygen, but do not let it go too fast. Then organisms with high metabolic rates and where there is a lots of um, uh, lots of um, aerobic respiration taking place, they will have low affinity. Why? Because they need to be able to release this oxygen quite quickly, quite easily for the aerobic respiration to take place. Right. So let's have a quick look at this diagram here. We can see P, okay, and oxygen and carbon dioxide. So what P stands for? P stands for the partial pressure, which is uh, the measure of the concentration. So looking at the partial pressure, uh, for the oxygen and for the carbon dioxide, it's of course it's going to be a, a high partial pressure of the oxygen in the alveoli in the lungs, and uh, it's going to be lower partial pressure of the carbon dioxide in uh, in them. So, what we're aiming for here is the fact that in the alveoli there is a high concentration of the oxygen. So partial pressure of the oxygen in the alveoli is higher than after respiration at the respiring cells took place. So this provides the answer for the fact that uh, loading of the oxygen will take place in the alveoli but unloading at the respiring cells. So what we're going to try and do now is to describe the whole process of loading and unloading using the information about partial pressure and the locations. So hemoglobin loads with the oxygen at the lungs where the partial pressure for oxygen is higher. But then unloads the oxygen at the respiring cells uh, where the partial pressure is lower. So let's uh, let's just uh, recap on this again. So uh, partial pressure is the measure of the concentration. So we can do it for the oxygen. We can do it on the carbon dioxide. So if we would like to put it in the sentences to explain how oxygen is loaded and unloaded in, in blood, what we're going to do, we're going to say, what does it take place? and at uh, what type of the partial pressure. So hemoglobin will carry or has a high affinity for oxygen. So loading takes place in the lungs at the high partial pressure, where unloading takes place at the respiring cells at the lower partial pressure. And this unloading is linked to a high carbon dioxide concentration, with, which is, of course, a product of respiration. Right. So oxygen dissociation curve. So how the uh, uh, how the uh, hemoglobin can load with oxygen is described by this S shaped curve. So uh, how does it work? It shows you the partial pressure against the saturation of hemoglobin. So when you're looking at the at the beginning of the uh, of our graph, the partial pressure is low, so is the saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen. Why is this a case? Because it's so hard to bind 
with the uh, with the oxygen so when the first molecule will bind what is it going to happen it's going to change so the first molecule of oxygen binds and this process changes the tertiary structure of hemoglobin remember hemoglobin is a protein tertiary structure is changed doing so it uncovers the binding sites for another two oxygen molecules this uh, oxygen then okay uh, number two and number three can bind this process of by, uh, of binding the first one changing the tertiary structure and uncovering the binding site it's called positive cooperativity so once we've got first second and the third this hemoglobin it's it's saturated with three out of four oxygen so again it's really difficult for the last one to bind okay so remember the first and the last it's really hard to bind right so really quick question here explain how changes in the shape of hemoglobin result in the s-shaped oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve so changes in shape what do they do so what do they do they changes the uh, tertiary structure of the hemoglobin and uncovers the binding sites for another oxygens okay so this curve dissociation curve can move to the left or can move to the right this is due to the of course uh, different metabolic rates and different uh, locations whether the species can live so when the curve moves to the left so it's our pink one that means that this hemoglobin is adapted and has a high affinity so high affinity means that can load with oxygen easier but release harder okay so it's not easy to release the oxygen when you move to the right so our a green curve the hemoglobin is adapted by having low affinity so this is for example when you exercise so low affinity enables this hemoglobin to uh, to release oxygen really easily so points to remember okay curve to the left so higher affinity for oxygen takes or plots with oxygen easily release less easily and oxygens will live in low oxygen concentrations why the curve is turned to the right it's all the way around so lower affinity oxygen taken up uh, less easily release uh, on loads of oxygen is uh, more easily and organisms here have a high rate of respiration so they need lots of oxygen so a quick question to practice species b is more active so that one then a use figure five to explain how the hemoglobin of species b okay is uh, allows a higher level of activity so b as you can see it's moved more to the right so if you're moving to the right according to our notes there is a lower affinity lower affinity means that they can unload oxygen easier so more oxygen for more respiration okay so curve to the right so lower affinity hemoglobin unloads easily and so more oxygen for more respiration right so that's everything for hemoglobin see you later